What's going on everybody? So today we have another in-depth training shoe review for you guys. And I've been spending quite a bit of time over the last week, roughly, several different types of workouts and movements with the Under Armour Project Rock 4. And I wanna go in depth, take a look around the shoe, tell you my experiences with them, what they're good for, what they're not so good for. So just stay tuned. So, as always, starting on the bottom of the shoe, as you can see, they still have the tri-base outsole, which has become tried and true for Under Armour training shoes. You do have, that's basically this triangle here. It touches all points, medial, lateral, and the rear. You have rubber going all throughout with a variety of different types of traction patterns, and then you do have some good flex grooves for natural motion toe-offs you have a different rigidity this is a softer more pliable rubber on the forefoot where it's a bit more solid and harder and just much more firm and stable in the heel so it really helps you feel very planted when doing heavier lifts moving into the midsole they do bring back the hover midsole but here it's a little bit different there's a lot more EVA foam for the carrier this go around mainly in the forefoot this TPU medial and lateral strap system runs across where the hover foam goes as well to really help keep it in place. And then you have the TPU heel clip that actually comes up on the medial and lateral side as well for enhanced stability on the hover midsole. As well as you can see, most of it is encased in the outsole and the heel clip here. Then it's encased in the TPU, which pulls tight and snug when laced up. So there isn't as much flex and give in the midsole this go round as compared to the three. I do find these a little bit more firm and stable overall than the Project Rock 3. The hover midsole, the hover foam was much more exposed and had a lot more room to flex and give and, and just compress overall. Whereas here, it's much more housed and, and encased within a more dense foam in the forefoot, which is half of the shoe. And then with the TPU heel clip going around the way it's designed with the rubber coming up in the rear, and then you have more TPU kind of helping hold it firm. So there's very few serious compression and flex spots for the hover. It does have some comfort, but overall, these are this is a much firmer and more stable and dense midsole foam overall. This actually was, I find quite the welcomed upgrade if you're more into heavier lifts. And then moving into the forefoot, you can see it's a multi-layered mesh this go around. They got rid of the knit material, so it's a multi-layer mesh. Does breathe very well, but provides a lot of flex. And, and it's such a thick, dense mesh. I don't really see too many problems coming in down the road with durability. I mean, it would have to snag on things and really tear, I would think, to have some durability issues. The rubber does wrap up to the toe. Here you have the Brahma Bull pressed into the rubber. So on toe offs and such, you do have that pliable rubber groove to where it can actually flex in toe offs and bite against whatever surface you're doing toe off type movements with. Moving into the midfoot, like I said, you have this TPU midfoot strap on the lateral and the medial side. So it does actually lock the foot into place really, really well when laced up. The one downside is they do, they are a little rounded, but you know, maybe over time, if you lace them really tight, which you should be lacing your shoes up to really be snug on your foot, I would think over time that'll wear down the laces a little bit, but for the foreseeable future, it seems to be just fine. And then looking at the lacing system, you do have some Flywire tech, though it's not called Flywire because 
it's Under Armour. The name Flywire is a trademark of Nike, but going up the eyelet holes, you do have that to really help wrap through. It goes through the material. You can actually feel it here. It wraps under the foot. So your entire midfoot is locked down very, very well. And then moving into the rear, you do have a heel cup in here as well. Brahma Bull branding on the heel. And like I said, blood, sweat, respect on the heel clip that does wrap up the medial and lateral side for medial and lateral stability and extra rigidity overall. This is actually a much more stable shoe than it looks like at first glance. When you actually wear these, there's a lot of stability features here. And then you do have the Achilles pillow to help with some of the comfort and it is a booty design so it does stretch to slide your foot in very well you do have a decent amount of stepping comfort with a nice eva eva mid so mid uh mid foam in the insole it is not removable so those of you that use different you know have different levels of art support that are required and you like to remove your insoles you'll have to tear this one out you can take it out it's just not supposed to be removable but you'll have to tear this bad boy out but overall the design i do think it's a welcomed upgrade i did love the look of the project rock 3 but the the obvious upgrades that they made in this shoe overall i do think makes it a better more well constructed shoe as a whole for casual lifters and even slightly more hard, I'm not gonna say hardcore lifters, but those that are really serious about variety when it comes to power lifts. And then one last thing, they did get the fit and sizing right this time. So I'm an eight and a half true to size with most shoes, especially Under Armour. I have an eight and a half in the Project Rock 3 and my toe is right at the end, whereas I do have maybe a third of an inch roughly of toe space here and my toes aren't snug on the sides it is a little bit more of a wide fit not quite as narrow and athletic as the project rock 3 but it still maintains a nice snug athletic feel overall but the heel to toe is a much more true to size last so i would definitely go with your true size with the project rock 4. So moving into lifting, like I was saying, with the new construction of this shoe, it is a much more stable shoe under heavier lifts. Sumo deadlifts, straight leg deadlifts, squats, heavy leg press. It just, I didn't feel a lot of compression. And you know how it is when you're doing deadlifts and such, you rock back on your heels a bit. And there was no real squishy feel or slight feel of compression where I felt some instability in the heel. The forefoot is quite firm compared to the project rock 3 i feel like these are much more stable than some people even would give this credit for like i said at first look uh the break-in period on this i actually had to break in the eva foam in the forefoot a little bit because they were just so dense and firm they feel a little squishy when you squeeze it here but the actual ride is a little bit more dense than anticipated because i got so used to the project rock 2 and the project rock 3 well this is much more of the lifter shoe of the Project Rock line. So if you, let's say you didn't like some of the responsiveness and feedback of the hover because it just would, it was able to compress a bit more in the Project Rock 3, this is gonna be a wonderful upgrade for you and you are gonna like this if you do a lot more CrossFit style workouts or power lifts where there's constant power cleans, deadlifts, squats, and so on. Your heavier lifts on a regular basis, this shoe will tackle all of it just fine. Now, going over you know, 450 to 500 pounds on these lifts, I don't know, because I don't lift that heavy. I don't surpass like 405 with any of my lifts as far as uh, using a barbell. Now on the leg press, uh, uh, today as a matter of fact was leg day, and I didn't go past 845s on each side, but I didn't feel any compression, I didn't feel any instability. The shoe handled the leg press just fine. It didn't squish any, I mean, granted, not a loose barbell where you need much more stability. It is a machine on a track, but it didn't feel like they were squishing or anything like that. And that was well, well over 400 pounds. I forgot the amount exactly, around the 700 pound mark, but no issue whatsoever for me. Moving into plyometrics, motions where you're on your toes a bit more, box jumps, sled push. Uh, there's just, it's a versatile shoe, but because of that firmness of the forefoot, uh, the responsiveness was there, but there wasn't, I didn't really feel that bouncy spring back responsiveness feel that I felt in the, or still feel in the Project Rock 3. I actually feel like the Project Rock 3 was a little bit better of a plyometric 
type of shoe overall, but when it comes to lateral movements, this is actually a bit more stable, so that's the trade-off. There's a little less responsiveness because there's an increase in stability, but that's a, that's a good trade-off if you do a lot of lateral movements, if you do side-to-side -side motions on the box, if you do different sprints and you, you know start and stop where you're not just straight line sprinting, you're literally hitting the brakes and changing direction and coming back, you're not gonna roll over the material. This actually bites pretty well and the foot's gonna be locked in also very, very snugly. So that's the trade-off where you lose a little bit of responsiveness for the stability if you have that style of workout with your agility movements, it's actually a welcome trade-off. But if you're just doing things where you're constantly just on your forefeet, this is gonna take a little bit of getting used to. There's a little bit of foot fatigue because you have to break in that EVA carrier a little bit because there's so much more of it versus the Project Rock 3, which goes right into shorter runs. I do like running in the Project Rock 3 a little bit more until these were broken in. It took about two to three workouts for that forefoot to really start giving me a little bit more of a responsive feel because that carrier started to give a little bit more uh, as it heats up around your foot and it flexes and compresses over and over from different lifts and high impact movements, jumps and so on. It did break in fairly quickly, uh, but the first day when I was doing cardio, I did have some discomfort in my foot. There was some foot fatigue. So that's one thing to keep in mind, but it goes away very quickly. I wanna say the following workout it was barely any foot fatigue. Then the third workout, I didn't have any foot fatigue. They were pretty much broken in by that third workout because I do do some light running on the treadmill at the end of every workout, even on leg days. So I wouldn't want to run longer distance in the Project Rock 4 for sure, but shorter distances, sprints, light runs and jogs, these will do just fine. Walking around casual, it's actually a smooth looking training shoe. You know, there's not too much branding everywhere you have the under armor logo here down on the mid midfoot strap towards the base of the midsole and out where it meets the outsole and then you have the brahma bull on the heel but it's not huge like say the bsr is where you got a brahma bull real big right here so the branding's minimal so those of you who don't like you, you know a giant nike check or something like that on the side of your shoe this will be a good casual everyday shoe for you it's got enough step in comfort to get through throughout the day especially after two or three days of continuous wear or putting in them through the ringer in the gym when they're nice and broken in the step in comfort becomes even greater because they've started to mold around your foot they're actually totally fine as a daily wear shoe casually just going on about your business they look fine with joggers they look great with jeans and so on so if this is something that you would want to wear day to day commuting to and from the gym it's going to do just fine there this isn't such a hardcore lifting shoe that's too stable to wear you know after two hours or so your foot's going to start to hurt and have some discomfort and fatigue this isn't that type of shoe so casual everyday wearing totally fine uh casual lifting bodybuilding style movements where you're on benches you're using cables and so on leg days it does totally fine as you would expect no issues there whatsoever so the pricing on these went up so instead of 140 now they're 150. if you were willing to pay the 140 on the Project Rock 3s, you'll be willing to pay the 150 on the Project Rock 4. So why the premium? Well, inflation overall, everything has gone up. The new Tri-Base Rain 4 is also $150. I have those as well. That went up $20 from the previous model. This went up another 10. Cost of materials globally has just gone up. So on top of that, you're paying for that Brahma Bull. This is Dwayne The Rock Johnson's signature shoe. So you were already paying a premium at $140, $10 above their top tier training shoes like the Tri-Base Rain, Rain line, which was the Tri-Base Rain 3 was the prior model when the Project Rock 3 was out. So you were paying a $10 premium here. It's this, it lines up with Under Armour's premium training shoe that is the non-signature shoe. So this rivals the same price point of $150 USD versus the Tri-Base Rain 4. So you're getting a lot of the same tech as far as the outsole. The difference here is you have a hover midsole that's encapsulated very well versus a micro G midsole with the Tri-Base Rain 4, but that's a much lower heel to toe drop. That's more of a hard, that's a harder core, if you will, 
lifting shoe. That's a two millimeter heel to toe drop. Whereas this is a bit higher. I believe this is an eight millimeter heel to toe drop. Might even be a six. I, I did not double check. Shame on me beforehand, but it's not so drastic. It is a higher stack, but not quite as high as some of the running shoes from Under Armour. So the pricing I would say is fair because I mean it's not like it is with Jordans these days where they're over two hundred dollars USD. If you're if you're serious about your fitness, you're gonna and you want the latest and greatest, you're gonna have to pay the premium for it. That's just reality. And if you're a fan of Dwayne the Rock Johnson, you're gonna pay a premium for his signature shoe as well. Overall, I do think they are worth the money. If you're a fan of the brand, I would say this is the best overall training shoe from Under Armour currently. Granted, I have not been doing any training yet in the Tri-Base Rain 4, but this is gonna be a bit more versatile for those casual runs for sprints and such because it's, you get a little bit more heel cushion out of this. So this is gonna be the better all around shoe from Under Armour if you're serious about training. It has upgraded stability from the Project Rock 3 if that was an issue for you with the Project Rock 3. It's a welcome change. They got the fitting right. The last is much better. They do breathe just as well, if not a little bit better, and they're not quite as snug on your toe. And, and like I said, the best part is the fit and feel of these. They feel great on foot, they look great on foot, and they perform great on foot. So overall, I absolutely think they were worth it. I was very excited to get these, and they have been an overall pleasure to train in. And until next time, do me a real quick favor, go ahead and like, comment, subscribe. So I do appreciate all the feedback and I love hearing from you guys. How many of you have trained in the Project Rock 4? What do you think about them? Are you using the Project Rock 2 or 3 still? Because I know a lot of people's favorite Project Rock shoe overall has been the 2. And I'll admit, great shoe, great shoe. And I actually really do like the 3 as well. But I would say this is a better shoe overall. They did upgrade some of, they listened. Some of the complaints people had with the Project Rock 3, they definitely definitely listened to everybody with the Project Rock 4. And this is a better overall, more stable training shoe that doesn't lose some of that response. It loses just a little bit of responsiveness, but still has plenty of responsiveness for your plyometric and agility workouts. I think it's a great training shoe overall. And until next time, I will say if you get the Project Rock 4 and you implement it into your workouts, you put them through the ringer with your training, you might end up thanking me later. Have a good one, guys.